democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten tonight. Scheming Sturgeon returns and immediately demands civility in politics. Is she serious? I detest the Tories and everything they stand for. Just as they're transphobic, you will also find that they're deeply misogynist. So I'll tell the disgraced First Minister to spare us the lessons on decency and humbly work to fix the country she's left in ruins. That's in my digest next, then my superstar panel weigh in. And tonight I'm joined by Alison Pearson, Sean Bailey and Amy Nicole. Also coming up, the migrant money pit. It's revealed that even moving empty dinghies from the channel is costing us more than £2 million a year. So isn't it time Rishi Sunak got tough and started turning the boats back? That's our big debate later in the show. Elsewhere tonight, as anti-Tory attack dog Carol Vorderman ends her six-month hate campaign against Tory chairman Greg Hands with a groveling apology, should she now be axed by the BBC for political bias? Will Kim Woodburn, Christopher Biggins and Jenny Barnett do battle in an A-list clash? Also on the way, as Slippery Starmer's new Justice Secretary uses the prison escape of a terror suspect for cheap political point scoring. Big questions for the government to answer. Frankly, Rishi Sunak needs to get a grip. So has Labour's Tory bashing actually now turned farcical? Former prisons minister Anne Whittacombe, she's a woman who knows a lot about this. She will give her verdict on the jihadi jailbreak that's gripping the nation. Breaking tonight, Prince Harry has become the first royal to speak out publicly ahead of the first anniversary of the late Queen's passing. As you know, I was unable to attend the awards last year when my grandmother passed away. As you also probably know, she would have been the first person to insist that I still come to be with you all instead of going to her. Lady Colin Campbell and Phil Dampier react live to that tribute shortly. Then, in an exclusive, we hear from the former Prime Minister who stoically guided the nation through its grief. Liz Truss gives GB News insight into the most extraordinary 12 days in British history in the next hour. Plus, football royalty meets actual royalty as Gaza and Prince William share an intimate moment in a Bournemouth Pret. But what prompted that incredible moment? Well, in a world-exclusive interview, Paul Gascoigne joins me live to tell all about that kiss with the heir to the British throne. As always, tomorrow's newspaper's hot off the press too. This is Dan Wilson tonight. Let's go. You're watching TV News, Britain's news channel. Yes, two big exclusives tonight, Gaza and Liz Truss. First, though, the news headlines with Ray Addison. Thanks, Dan. Good evening. Our top stories tonight. More than 150 counter-terrorism officers are working around the clock in an effort to locate escaped terror suspect Daniel Khalifa. GB News sources have confirmed that he's accused of spying for Iran. Met police say a lack of sightings of Khalif is testament to his ingenuity as a soldier. Meanwhile, the force has released an image of the bid food vehicle it's believed he used to escape, and security checks have been tightened at ports. Despite the incident, the Prime Minister says there's been fewer prison escapes under the Conservative government. There are something like 4,000 more prison officers uh, than there were in 2017. And with regard to the Labour Party who posed the question, again, the facts show that during their 13 years in office, there were 10 times the number of escaped prisoners than you've seen in the 13 years of Conservative-led government. But we're doing everything we can to find this person. And as I said, if anyone has any information, please do contact the police. Well, Labour leader Sakir Starmer says the government is totally at fault. 
I think we now know there were already some pretty damning reports into Wandsworth, um, issues about staffing, issues about buildings, and that's a pattern of behaviour now under this government, whether it's this prison um, or other prisons or other infrastructure across uh, the country. And you know, it certainly hasn't helped that in the last 10 years we've had 10 justice secretaries. And I know from my time as director of public prosecutions just how important stability is when it comes to criminal justice. A police investigation is being launched into dozens of baby deaths and injuries at Nottingham University Hospital's NHS Trust. More than 1,700 families were part of an independent review of maternity care at NUH, led by Donna Ockenden. The senior midwife led a similar investigation at the Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital NHS Trust. The Prime Minister is facing another by-election following the resignation of his former Deputy Chief Whip Chris Pincher. The MP for Tamworth made the decision after losing an appeal against an eight-week suspension over groping allegations. In a statement, Mr Pincher said he didn't want uncertainty for his constituents. He sent his resignation letter to the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. This was a situation that needed to be resolved and uh, now we know the way forward and we will put forward a very strong candidate from the Conservative Party who will help attract investment, uh, jobs to Staffordshire and to the wider region and that's what we'll be campaigning on. On TV, online, on DAB Plus Radio and on TuneIn 2, this is GB News. Back now to Dan. Scheming Sturgeon giving a speech calling for civility and respect in politics is a bit like Gary Lineker lecturing on the importance of BBC impartiality. Now that she's a disgraced former First Minister who drove her nation into the ground while doing all she could to make relations between Scots and the English as difficult as possible, she intends to lecture politicians and the public about our increasingly toxic political discourse and what she hopes will become a disunited kingdom. You truly couldn't make this up. But in the increasingly delusional world of Queen Nick, that's exactly what happened while making her return to the Scottish Parliament for the first time in five months following her arrest. This was part of the bizarre and self-serving eight-minute address. I want to conclude, presiding officer, with a few words, not so much on what we do here, but on how we do it. Uh, before I do, let me say that I accept my share of responsibility for the state of our political discourse. Uh, if anything, though, that makes me more determined to play a part in trying to change it. To say that my perspective on politics has altered uh, would be something of an understatement. Certain things look different, uh, perhaps a bit clearer, in fact, from here than from the trenches of the political front line. Sturgeon likes to think of her future as some sort of Scottish Michelle Obama being paid millions to spread woke mumbo-jumbo far and wide. But while the mainstream media and political establishment might deify her, we must remember the truth about Sturgeon's legacy. This was the woman who proudly boasted of detesting Tories while at home with her pals at the British Bashing Corporation. She blamed poor English folk for ruining her country's utterly insane and irresponsible zero COVID policy. She gaslit biological women campaigning for the rights of the woman, all while allowing a male rapist called Adam Graham to reside in an all-female prison. And she talked about the democratically elected Prime Minister of the UK, Boris Johnson like a piece of dirt on her bright blue stilettos, even though he was nothing but polite and charming towards her at all time. In fact, I am tonight prepared to declare that Sturgeon is the most divisive and negative political figure in modern British history. I detest the Tories and everything they stand for. Just as they're transphobic, you will also find that they're deeply misogynist. Uh, often homophobic, possibly some of them racist as well. You're a fascist, you are a racist, and the south side of Glasgow will reject. ...sense of corruption at the heart of the Westminster system, and that has to be rooted out. ...that Boris Johnson has so clearly lost the confidence of the UK. It is just, I think, an unsustainable proposition. I, I detest the Tories and everything they stand for. 
So scheming Sturgeon can spare us the lectures about political civility, OK? She must be judged on her time in power and the sorry state she's left Scotland, which will end up being much better without her. But to respond now, my superstar panel, top Daily Telegraph columnist Alison Pearson, Conservative peer Lord Bailey, and the author and broadcaster Amy Nicole Turner. Alison Pearson, was this the most hypocritical political address you've ever heard? Well, it's a bit like watching a reformed arsonist <laughs> surrounded by the burnt-out shells of all the burning <laughs> buildings. Uh, I think your intro is absolutely right, Dan. I mean, the most divisive uh, politician incredibly talented. She could have been a force mm -hmm. for good, but she was spewing hatred at Westminster. She was really unpleasant with Boris, who, whatever you think about him, is an amiable guy. He'd never be rude in person to anyone, and she was absolutely horrible. I think she worsened relations between Scotland and England, and for her to now to turn around and sort of say, oh, there may have been a bit of acrimony mm. causing paralysis, and you think, you know, the, the thing I Where really... did the acrimony come Where from? Where did the acrimony come from? And the thing I really have against her is during COVID, that was an opportunity for the leaders of the devolved governments to pull together with a common cause, and she used every trick in the book to outdo Westminster with madder and worse measures for Scotland, longer school closures, more vaccine this, more vaccine that. I think she's been absolutely dreadful. Sean Bailey, I, I, I believe uh, you actually agree with me in terms of my prescription on her being uh, really the most divisive politician we've had in a very long time. Dan, I very rarely write notes for your show, but at the top of my notes, mm. I've written the word hypocrite. She is the most sneering politician, I'd argue, possibly in the world. And that's a big feat, considering we have mm -hmm. our very own Sadiq Khan here to deal with as well. Mm -hmm. And the way in which Your she conducted... Exactly. The way in which she conducted herself lowered the level of relations between, between England and, and Scotland in such a way it, it could take a decade to, mm -hmm. to repair. But the most important thing I think this shows is she's one of those people, one rule for her and another rule for everybody else. The fact that she's asked for this change after the way she's conducted herself says, and something very important to me, and this is going to sound like a leap, but what you're seeing here is a bully. What a bully often does is change the parameters around them to suit themselves. She spent over a decade bullying people, mm. and now that she's on the back foot, all of a sudden she wants to change the rules. I, and, I and, they, and they why ask, she wants right. civility now. I, sure. I, 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 I'll, I'll, what, what I'll tell you why. Like, they ask oh. you, they, they, mm. the, the measure of a person is how they behave when they had power. Yes. Yes, and she behaved like a bully then, and now she's trying to change the rules. This turned my stomach, mm. because I, I'm so upset that she would try to pull the wool over her eyes as if we weren't paying attention. Mm. And I truly believe she's no longer the leader of Scotland, not just because of balmy policies, not because of sort of trans stuff, but actually because of her disgraceful attitude. And that's why nobody wanted to support her in the end. Absolutely. I completely agree with that because the thing is, Scots are good people. Yes. And they are kind people. Yes. And while for a long time they did buy into her separatism pipe mm -hmm. dream, I think by the end mm -hmm. they realised that actually they wanted to rise above yeah. the reign of Sturgeon. Uh, Amy Nicole, why on earth is this woman demanding civility now? Why did she know civility, show no civility during her decade plus in charge? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think you talk about the measure of a person. I think you can measure a person by the way they respond to things that they've done in the past and they take responsibility. And today, she admitted responsibility for her mistakes and she says she's changed her perspective after she's left the political front line. So she's admitting that, yes, she might have been divisive in the past, but she wants to change Isn't that too little, going too forward. And that's something you rarely see in politics, particularly from the Tory party, who never uh, take any account for responsibility Listen, when they do things wrong. The, the, yeah. the smirk on her face, the, not, the, the, the apology that wasn't really apology, just lets me know she's not sincere, well, which she, makes I, it I even think worse. She's got a lot and, and also, to be she, did, about. she did the thing that people on the left often do. They make it the Tory party. I'll tell you why this is terrible. When you're a politician, there's two ways to play the game. You can disagree with someone's argument or you can disagree with their 
person. She was one of the people on the left who Thank painted people on the right as bad people, which but, means you can never recover. You can it, never have a debate. But it, what, so she won eight elections in a row. She's undeniably so hugely Pot. popular. Uh, <laughs> it's something that none of the current, the, the Rishi or the five other prime ministers we've had this Boris year might have can, been, can, yeah, can, claim, can claim to um, have done. Today, but, today, and, but today, that eight minute, that eight minute statement, that was a Queen's statement. Mm. Yeah, so much yeah. for the ever so humble. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. She was yeah, grand, but what, but what, 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 what does she have to be sorry? though. We are not denying that she she was incredibly popular. However, good first ministers, yeah. good prime ministers realise that after an election, they're actually representing their entire country. And yeah. I think what I found so despicable about Sturgeon was when she went on the BBC, and it was her true colours, it's what she's like behind closed doors, mm. and she said she detests the Tories. Because yeah. remember, there are a lot of Tories in Scotland. Mm. And so what she's saying is that part of the, her people, part of her population, she detests. Well, the, it's Scot extraordinary. the Scottish Tories I know, and I've been saying this to you for a while, they've been in touch with me, absolutely saying when she falls, oh boy, the stuff that's going to come oh, out, because yeah. that woman ran Scotland as her personal fiefdom. Any um, opposition was brutally suppressed. Don't me, talk about the finances. Don't talk about the finances. Wonder no, why. Wonder why. <laughs> so this is all a bit sort of like, yeah. yes, uh, yeah, nicey, ni nicey, nicey, nicey. Indeed. And of course, uh, we will stress again, despite her arrest, she denies all wrongdoing. Amy Nicole, Lord Bailey, Alison Pearson, my superstar panel, with us all night. And I hope you are too, because we have a very big show on the way, including Prince Harry becoming the first royal to speak out ahead of the first anniversary of the late Queen's passing. As you know, I was unable to attend the awards last year when my grandmother passed away. As you also probably know, she would be the first person to insist that I still come to be with you all instead of going to her. Lady Colin Campbell and Phil Dampier react live to thank and rank the King's first year in office shortly. But first in the clash as Carol Vorderman admits Conservative Party Chairman Greg Hans had no part in the awarding of a £25.8 million PPE contract. Should she be axed by the BBC or her blatant political bias? We've got an A-list lineup on this. Social commentator Jenny Barnett, Panto legend Christopher Biggins and TV firebrand Kim Woodburn. But what do you think, Dan, at GBNews.com? Vote now. Poll at GB News on Twitter back after this. What you get for breakfast is something that if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you and we want you to get to know us. From six, it's breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon on GB News. Britain's news channel. Hi, I'm Dan Wooten. You can watch me live on GB News Monday to Thursday from 9pm. And did you know 
that you can also watch and listen live on our website, gbnews.com. You'll always be up to date on the latest breaking news, as well as enjoying the best stories, opinions, and shows. You can even join the debate under our live player as you're watching. So head straight to gbnews.com on TV, radio, and online. GB News, Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Gaza, Liz Truss and my Royal Malstein's all still to come. But first, The Clash. And breaking tonight, Carol Vorderman has been forced to delete 22 tweets after she made false claims about the Conservative Party chairman. Ford is continually accused Greg Hands of being involved in the awarding of a multi-million pound PPE contract to Lux Lifestyles during a venomous six-month campaign. But in a humiliating climb down, the former Countdown presenter turned lefty attack dog admitted there was no impropriety from Hands, but stopped short of apologising. So the MP for Chelsea and Fulham responded, saying the truth does matter. After her six-month campaign against me, I welcome Carol Vorderman today deleting 22 tweets and setting the record straight that I had no involvement in the awarding of any PPE contracts. These tweets were defamatory and damaging. An apology would help too. But after her transformation into an anti-Tory activist, should Carol be axed from her weekly BBC Wales radio show for political bias? Dan at GB News... Dot com. Vote in our poll at GB News on Twitter. But an A-list clash now with the panto legend, Christopher Biggins, TV firebrand hey, Kim Danny, Woodburn, and the social commentator Jenny Barnett. Biggins, great to see you. Look, the thing I don't understand here, Biggins, is Vorders can think whatever she wants, she can say whatever she wants, but not while she's a presenter on the BBC, Biggins. She's got to go, doesn't she, after this? I couldn't agree more. And nowadays, we're in a situation where none of us can say anything. So you have to really think about what you're saying. And if she's going to continue to say these things and not apologise, as she should do, then she should be ch chastised. And she should leave the, the BBC and she should leave the job. Jenny Barnett, surely that's the case. Carol Vorderman has freedom of speech, but she can't make egregious claims like this while working at the BBC, Jenny. program no spins no bias no censorship good girl i'll get you to record a voiceover for that <laughs> money <laughs> i'll take it uh, the truth is though that there's a demonization of people who don't agree with what's going on and we've become so polarized and i agree with begin here is that people don't know what to say when to say it how to say it I think we're in a dreadful situation, and no, she's opened the door for free speech for people like me to say what I want, people like you to say what. But she's what lied, want. Jenny. And she's lied. She's made defamatory claims. It was a lie, a big fat oh, lie. How do we? Know? I don't know. There's well, a demonisation. Why she deleted 22 tweets? Why she issued a well, clarification? Well, that's what I, I wonder why. I wonder why there has been a deletion of this where she's been pushed, who's pushed her, why. And I think she and Gary Lineker are standing by their principles and people like me are still allowed to speak my truth like they are Well, theirs. not on the BBC, you're not. No offence. No offence, but not if you're a BBC presenter, you're not. I mean, Kim Woodburn, isn't that the difference here? The BBC is meant to be an impartial broadcaster, Kim. 
Absolutely, you hit it on the head. Girl of order, and if you like, I on the hog, but I love. Um, I thought no, I, thought I you, was speaking. You now, Carol Vorderman is an eye on the hog for a long time. And I'll tell you something about her. She's supposed to have an IQ. Oh, yeah, Kim, just step forward a little, Kim. Kim, lean forward a little, can you? Because we're just struggling to hear you. But if you lean forward, there you go. That's better, Kim. Just lean forward and then we'll hear you. Keep going, Kim. Sorry. Carol Vorderman should lose her job. She's become a dictator. She's gone on for too long. Something did last month that thoroughly irritated me at the Vietnam vet. She thoroughly aggravates me. She has no right to suggest, to suggest that that MP was in any way giving that gentleman that contract for, shall we say, favours. Favours indicating money or favours indicating favours. It was a disgusting thing to do. And I'll tell you something, it won't be forgotten. When you're an MP and these things, you know, turn up, People will always say, oh, that's the guy she accused of fiddling, if you like. She had no right to do it. She's got far too big for her boots, as our Carol. Far too big. She really has. She's made remarks lately on that television channel that have been appalling, and she shouldn't get away with it. Yes, she should be fired. Come down to earth, Carol. If I can be very quick, I felt very sorry about something she did last month. I was appalled. There was a, a lovely man called Johnny Mercer who was in the army. He went to Sandhurst. He passed out of Sandhurst. He became an army captain. He served in Afghanistan. He was a special forces and he did three tours of Afghanistan. And for that, my love, he was made a minister for veterans. And yeah. she turned around, that silly bitch turned around and said, he shouldn't be an army <laughs> Because, she said, he should have had a degree. Stupid... Kim, Kim. Well, of course, look, I don't think we should throw insults, Kim, but that's your opinion. Okay. Jenny Barnett, your response. <laughs> Well, I think that, that I, I mean, Biggins, I love you. We've loved each other for years and years. What I want to say is done. this. We have. We have. That having a conversation, discourse is vital to our country. And yeah. Kim, when you throw those kind of insults, you did it to Phil, Philip Schofield, you did it to Prince Harry. It's cheap. It's cheap. It may be that you call it's it deep. deep. I call it the truth. She ought to get your truth. Scope. It is your truth. Biggins, step in. What do no, you Biggins, think? You come in. You come in here, Biggins. Come in here, Biggins. No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I think sometimes you do say things which you shouldn't be saying because you know we all love Harry, and we all love other things that you don't like, and we have to have our opinions. Yeah. I don't dislike Harry. Correct. She is. Well, I think that I think that people like Gary Lineker and people like Carol Vorderman, because the mainstream have been told that they are wrong and they shouldn't be talking, they are being demonised. Oh, Jenny, and don't be ridiculous. Win. Would I ever be hired to present a show on the BBC, Jenny? No. Would Nigel Farage <laughs> ever be hired to host a show on the BBC, Jenny? No. Would Jacob Rees-Mogg ever be hired God to host a show on the BBC? Is all I can say. No. And you know why? Because we're people of the centre right, and so. People of the centre-left, or I would say in the case of Carol Vorderman these days, the hard-left, why do they get that privilege, Kim? It's completely unfair. Why she try to ruin that politician's uh, life? Yes. You know, what she said about... Well, like him, you tried to ruin Philip Schofield. Like you tried to ruin the people that you demonise. Excuse me. When I went on his show, you're talking to your backside. When I went on his show, I was terribly sad. I had everybody agreed I'd yeah. be given a terrible in there. Philip Schofield sat on that set and he sniggered at me and he said, well, why did you go in then? He's a little... We're not idiot. talking about Philip well, Schofield. In fairness, We're Jenny, about... in fairness, Jenny, you <laughs> raised <laughs> Philip. Kim Don't didn't raise raise Philip. You, ra you raised Philip. I did. I admit that. And so I take Kim's just responding. But look, we, we're not talking about Philip Schofield. We're talking about Carol Vorderman. Personally, I think this is clear-cut. Uh, final word, Kim? 
Well, Carol Vorderman, she's gone, Matt. She's nutty, dear, isn't she? I mean, mm. my What's God, she's talking to her. She used to she be quite nice. Like, she walks in, uh, behind, in front of you, she looks like a bum's two pigs fighting in a sack. With a Im, it's not about the size of a person's bottom. Well, you've got to admit, she's always talking about that, Jenny. But look, fascinating debate. Uh, sorry about the tech sorry. issues. I feel like I'm on a ship. Carol. <laughs> And if you're not prepared to tell the truth, don't come on. Jenny Barnett, <laughs> Kim Woodfin, Christopher Biggins, I love all three of you, but who do you agree with on this? That's Carol Vorderman at Mitt's Conservative Party, Jim and Greg Hans at no part in the awarding of a £25 million plus PPE contract. Should she be axed by the BBC? Well, Alan, via Twitter writes, the BBC are built around political bias these days. Just look at how fast they moved on from the Gary Lineker episode. They love employing loudmouth lefties like Vorderman because, of course, they harbour the same views. Here, here. Uh, Diane writes... I think it would be nice if she actually gave him a personal apology. She needs to make sure she knows what she's talking about before opening her mouth in the future. And, Diane, I can tell you that because she's told a lot of lies about me, this woman. And Angela on Twitter writes, Carol failed to fact-check something a competent journalist should always do. Her personal agenda took precedence over professional standards. Her position is untenable. And I guess maybe, Angela, that's because Carol Waterman is not a journalist. Your verdict now in 78% of you agree that Vorders should be axed by the BBC. 22% of you say she should stay in post. My Royal Mastermind, Lady Colin Campbell and Phil Dampier pay tribute to the late Queen. And Paul Gascoigne gives his world exclusive insight on sharing a kiss with Prince William in the next hour. First, though, the weather. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed boilers, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello, it's Aidan McGibbon here from the Met Office with the GB News forecast. Another warm night to come overnight with elevated temperatures for the time of year. More hot sunshine to come then into Friday. Not for everyone, there is a fair amount of medium and high level cloud around and there are some showers drifting north across Scotland and Northern Ireland overnight. Most of the rain not reaching the ground. These are relatively high base showers, but you could see some flashes of lightning as that clears away. Then for most places it's dry with clear spells some low cloud creeping into the east coast but wherever you are it's a warm night a muggy feel 18 19 20 celsius in the south mid to high teens in the north and that sets us off for a warm start to friday still some of that low cloud and mist around the east coast but it tends to retreat during the morning to the immediate beaches and there'll be some low cloud creeping around the southwestern coast as well with the potential for some showers to turn up later here. Otherwise, for many, it's bright skies and another hot day. Mid to high 20s widely, 30 or 31 Celsius in the south and southeast. Then into Saturday, it's another warm start to the day. Plenty of sunshine from the word go, especially towards the east and the south. A change on the way, though, for the north and northwest. Northern and western Scotland see some showers and some cooler air later. That spreads across the northern half of the country on Sunday, clearing elsewhere on Monday. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed Boilers, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Coming up, as Slippery Starmer's new Shadow Justice Secretary Shabana Mahmood claims the prison escape of just one terror suspect proves Rishi Sunak needs to get a grip. Has the Tory bashing and political opportunism of Labour turned farcical? Former prisons minister Anne Whittakam, she knows all about this, gives her verdict on the jihadi jailbreak gripping the nation. But next, as we prepare to mark one year since the late Queen's death tomorrow, Prince Harry has become the first royal tonight to pay tribute publicly. As you know, I was unable to attend the awards last year as my grandmother passed away. As you also probably know, she would have been the first person to insist that I still come to be with you all instead of going to her. My Royal Masterminds, Eddie Colin Campbell and Phil Dampier react to that next and they'll give their ratings for King Charles's first year on the throne as we look back on the news that sent shockwaves across the globe. This September, the GB News family is back together from breakfast. Right across the day, breaking the latest stories and every evening. And don't forget the weekend. We've got the whole of the UK covered. 
Every week, we'll be hearing your views from up and down the country with fun, lively, and intelligent conversation with the biggest guests. This September, we'll meet Chris and John. Thank you for choosing GB News. We're proud to be Britain's news channel. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes & Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate, both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until 7 o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows... Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel like all families, we have arguments every now and then, but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is, and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often, they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast, Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the people's channel. Britain's news channel. Anne Whittakim, Liz Truss and Gaza all on the way. But first, we welcome back our royal masterminds, Lady Colin Campbell and Phil Dampier. And an emotional King Charles is tonight thought to be surrounded by close friends at Balmoral, paying private tribute to his late mother, who died one year ago tomorrow at the Scottish Castle, sending the UK and the world into unprecedented mourning. We are not expecting to see Charles III in public, although reports suggest the Prince and Princess of Wales could make some sort of public statement. They will, however, be competing with Prince Harry, who landed in the UK for the Well Child Charity Awards and has already made a public statement. As you know, I was unable to attend the awards last year as my grandmother passed away. As you also probably know, she would have been the first person to insist that I still come to be with you all instead of going to her. <clears throat> and that's precisely why I know exactly one year on that she is looking down on all of us tonight. Happy we're together continuing to spotlight such an incredible community. So, Lady Colin Campbell, there were fears among the royal household that Prince Harry would try and steal the attention away from the first anniversary of the late Queen's death, and it sort of looks like that's what he might have done tonight? Well, of course, Dan, of course he's done, you know. This is so predictable. 
I mean, I'm sure you and I know that the King will be making some sort of announcement which uh, is embargoed at the moment. And Harry knows the school, and Harry has just jumped in feet first yet again to try to snatch our attention from everybody. It's so pathetic. It really is. And, you know, when he says that the Queen is looking down on him with approval, I'm sorry, you know, anybody who knows what the Queen went through for the last years of her life knows that whatever she's doing, she's not looking down on him beaming with delight. She's looking down on him with horror that he has turned out to be what he was. I'm not saying that she didn't take her peace with life before she died. What I am saying, however, is she certainly did not approve of Harry's trajectory. And any pretense to the contrary is a damnable lie. Phil Dampier, uh, what do we know about what Charles, William and Kate are going to do to mark the first anniversary of the late Queen's death? I mean, we're pretty certain, aren't we, that they're not going to find time to see Harry, even though he's in the country. No, good evening, Dan. Well, as you know, as you say, we know that the King's up um, or, um, as Lady C says, I think there will be a statement, or a very brief statement. Um, the whole family's rallied around recent uh, weeks. They've put on a show of unity up and down moral, haven't they? And uh, I think the, the polls are showing that, generally speaking, the uh, the monarchy is holding up 60% support for the monarchy, which is roughly what it was when the Queen was alive. So I think they've taken it on. I mean, I have to pinch myself sometimes. It's a year. It's incredible, isn't it? And funnily enough, I kind of sometimes, you know, something will happen, it will set me off, and I have to sort of pinch myself that the Queen's no longer here, you know, whereas when it first happened, you're sort of, you know, sort of totally immersed with the changing of the guard. But I think months later, it's almost like, you know, when you lose someone in your own family, it sort of hits you moments later. And, uh, you know, it's never going to be quite the same without her, but uh, I think so far the monarchy is uh, holding up as an institution. Yeah, no, it, it, it's certainly not something that I've been able to accept, actually. We miss her maybe even more than we thought we would in some cases. But, look, as you say, uh, King Charles's performance in his first year has been relatively impressive. So, obviously, I had to get my Royal Masterminds to score his efforts. So, Lady C, you kick things off. Nine out of ten. <laughs> and what about you, Phil? I give him eight out of ten. I thought he made a fantastic start. I thought the start was absolutely brilliant. He really sort of took on a sort of king-like persona straight away and carried out. I thought that was brilliant. The only reason I would give him a ten is because I think he has dithered a bit over what to do with all these homes he's got and embarrassment of riches. I think he could have sorted that out a lot quicker. And I'd still like to see him going to one of the other countries that he's head of state. I know he's got to be invited. I know that some of these countries want to get rid of the monarchy, but I still think that going to Germany and France first doesn't give out a message that his heart's in the Commonwealth the same way that his mother was. So I, I know it's going to happen next year, but uh, I'd like to have seen it happen more quickly. Now, look, the Sussex's weird little mouthpiece, that odd bloke, Omid Scoby, very odd-looking man, is releasing his latest money-spinning book in the coming weeks, which he has revealed will include an entire chapter on Prince William titled gloves on Prince William heir to the throne. Now, Lady C, should the royal family be concerned over what Scobie may reveal here? Or actually, do we just now know that all he does is pump out, effectively, PR on behalf of Harry and Meghan? Well, first of all, Dan, I don't know why you call him old Scobie. His name is Amid Scabies. Oh, well, is a terrible <laughs> that causes all sorts of itching. And, you know, I think he's just pathetic. And I don't think that Prince William needs to worry about a thing, because everybody knows Amid Scabies is Harry and Meghan's Yosef Goebbels, the Minister of Propaganda. And there's nothing he says that is grounded in reality. It's grounded in Meganian and Haroldian reality, which is on reality. I think the man is absolutely pathetic. And, you know, anybody who believes him is, has to be a member of the Flat Earth Society.
<laughs> Great line, and I totally agree. But the problem is, Phil, he has the woke American media eating out of his sound. hands. Yeah, I don't like uh, judging a book by its cover, Dan. I don't like uh, judging a book without reading it, but I will, I will make an exception in his case. I mean, as Lady C says, we know it's going to be propaganda. We know it's going to be pro-Harry uh, and Meghan. It's going to be anti-William and Kate. I suppose one of the few things that might worry them is that Harry and Meghan will get uh, Omi to do their dirty work for them, which uh, they did with Finding Freedom. I mean, if he reveals the name of the uh, alleged racist, uh, the, you know, the member of the royal family who asked about Archie's skin colour, uh, that will uh, kick it all off again. They could do without that. But uh, whatever he comes up with, I still think the, they will have the same tactic. They just never complain or explain. They won't fight back. And, uh, you know, whatever he says, I don't think uh, you know, the public will make up their own minds about it. And I don't think it'll alter the, uh, the, the support that the royal family has. But, uh, you know, I'd, he just wish he'd go away, wouldn't you, really? <laughs> Bill Dampier, Lady Colin Campbell, my royal masterminds, thank you both so much. But coming up, with the cost of removing empty migrant dinghies from the channel, totaling more than £2 million for the British taxpayer each year, is now the time for Rishi Sunak to toughen up and introduce a turn back policy to avoid any more of this madness. My superstar panel will tackle that. Plus, we'll have the first of tomorrow's newspaper front pages just after 10, so don't go anywhere. But next, with Shadow Justice Secretary, uh, with the new Shadow Justice Secretary blaming the isolated prison escape of terror suspect Daniel Khalif directly on Rishi Sunak, is this nothing more than opportunistic Tory bashing from an out of touch Labour Party former prisons minister Anne Whittacombe? She knows all about this. And she'll be live to set Labour straight, straight after this. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. Mental? In your mouth. OK. Here comes a, here comes a train. <laughs> Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Oh, whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel.
Breaking tonight, the terror suspect Daniel Khalif still on the loose after escaping from Wandsworth Prison yesterday morning. Khalif was working in the prison's kitchen when he is believed to have absconded by strapping himself to the underside of a food delivery van. Justice Secretary Alex Chalk announced that an independent investigation into the incident will take place, adding Daniel Khalif will be caught. But the Labour shadow minister, fresh in her job, Shivana Mahmood, uh, said that uh, sort of rivaled uh, Keir Starmer really for political opportunism as she tried to pin the prison break on Rishi Sunak personally. Watch. I think the government uh, has very serious questions to answer. We know that the criminal justice system, after 13 years of Tory government, uh, is in a, a state of disrepair. We know that there are huge problems with prisons and prison places in particular. Uh, and as, as, as we've seen, there is now a terror suspect on the loose having escaped from Wandsworth Prison. So big questions for the government to answer. Frankly, Rishi Sunak needs to get a grip. Well, one woman who knows just how serious the situation is is the former prisons minister, Anne Whittakim. But, Anne, isn't this just out-and-out -out irresponsible political point scoring to directly try and blame the prime minister rather than actually look at why this man escaped? Uh, indeed. It's utterly irresponsible. It's also slightly farcical. I imagine anybody actually watching that interview would begin to laugh. Uh, because she doesn't even start to make the case. Everybody knows what happened. Uh, he strapped himself to the under uh, part of a, a vehicle and it went out through the prison gates and nobody on its way out of the prison gates put mirrors underneath or looked underneath or conducted any of the normal searches. It is straightforwardly down to the officers on duty, possibly to their supervisors if they didn't ensure that discipline didn't get lax in terms of these searches, but no way, no way does it reach even the director of the prison service, let alone a minister and let alone the prime minister. Now, I don't usually stand up for Rishi Sunak, but this is just blatant electioneering. She's irresponsible. I know she's only been in the job five minutes. Should, she should be out within five minutes as well. Yeah, totally, totally. Couldn't agree more. And from your perspective as prisons minister, what would you be doing in a situation like this? Well, first of all, of course, uh, there should never have been any possibility that a car could either come or go, it could both ways, uh, without a search. Because if, when it's coming in, it could be bringing in drugs. You, you don't know what it could do. So there should always be searches in both directions. That is not difficult to do. I mean, it's not as if prison gates are a big major public thoroughfare where you'd cause an enormous problem by holding up cars. I mean, rubbish. It's easy to do. And I think in this sort of situation, I mean, obviously the, the, the priority will be to try and, try and catch the man. But in this sort of situation, uh, I would simply be asking uh, the director general, I would be asking the senior people in the prison service uh, to inquire of the governor why it isn't routine in that prison to search vehicles. It's not an open prison. It's not even a cat seat trainer. It's a seriously secure prison, allegedly. Mm, allegedly, indeed. Uh, look, time now for Witty's War on Woke. <laughs> And Doctor Who star David Tennant is to appear in a new adaptation of Jilly Cooper novel Rivals, where he will play a media mogul cheering on the late great Margaret Thatcher. But Tennant must be acting through gruesome teeth, because speaking previously, this is what he had to say. When I started working in theatre in England, I would meet people and they would say, oh, I voted for Margaret Thatcher. The first time I heard someone saying that, I honestly thought they were joking. I'd be thinking, I have never met anyone from your world. What's it like? Do you roast children over open fires? I still find it impossible to believe that anyone in the arts votes conservative. Now, Anne, you say Tennant is a bigot for those views. Yes, yes he's a complete bigot. Uh, he doesn't believe that anybody in the arts should vote conservative. An awful lot of them do. Uh, and I've talked to a lot of them, stage, screen, writing. I've talked to an awful lot of people in the arts, and many of them tell me uh, that it was Thatcher who enabled their parents to buy their council house uh, and thus started the family 
uh, on the property ladder. And, and people have actually said that to me. They've said, you know, Mr. Thatcher did things for me. Uh, and if this man can't understand that, um, then, you know, I mean, he's an intelligent man. So it's not that he can't understand it because he's thick. He can't understand it because he's too bigoted to want to understand it. I mean, do you roast children over open fire? I mean, well, I take that. this is ludicrous, though. You know, it's ludicrous yes, language, though, Anderson. I know he's not yeah. using it literally, but come on. Yeah, I, I agree. It's inflammatory language and it's silly language. Uh, he didn't mean it literally, you know, and I'm not going to get into an uproar uh, uh, about that metaphor. Uh, what I'm disgusted at yeah. is that he, who, you know, parades as a liberal and as somebody who understands the arts and all these things, he simply can't understand that there might be any view other than his own, and that is the very definition of a bigot. Yeah, and of course, actually, this is why people in the entertainment industry, Anne, are too scared to speak out publicly on issues that are actually really important and that deserve debate, like trans rights, like puberty blockers for kids, because if they do, look at what's happened to Roisin Murphy, look at what's happened to Alice Cooper, they're cancelled immediately, and it's because of people like David Tennant. Uh, indeed. I mean, that, that's absolutely true. I mean, David Tennant might not believe in cancelling, but the fact is that once you maintain a position that nobody can have a contrary view, uh, then you create the atmosphere in which cancelling becomes the norm. And that is exactly why so many people are in showbiz uh, and so many people uh, from the stage uh, and elsewhere uh, simply don't want to speak out no. because there are too many David Tennant They're too around. scared. They're too scared. Anne Whittacombe, thank you so much. We will speak next week. But coming up after meeting Prince William earlier today and treating him to a smooch that only he could get away with, I'm very excited to be joined by the footballing legend Paul Gascoigne for an exclusive interview. Trust me, you don't want to miss that. But next, with the cost of removing dangerous migrant dinghies from the channel reaching £2 million, does the government need to crack down and consider a turn-back policy? My superstar panel thrashed that one out. Plus, we'll have a first look at tomorrow's newspaper front pages and an exclusive interview from Liz Truss reflecting on the anniversary of the death of the late Queen. The temperature's rising. Boxed Solar, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello, it's Aidan McGiven here from the Met Office with the GB News forecast. Another warm night to come overnight with elevated temperatures for the time of year. More hot sunshine to come then into Friday. Not for everyone, there is a fair amount of medium and high level cloud around and there are some showers drifting north across Scotland and Northern Ireland overnight. Most of the rain not reaching the ground. These are relatively high base showers, but you could see some flashes of lightning as that clears away. Then for most places it's dry with clear spells some low cloud creeping into the east coast but wherever you are it's a warm night a muggy feel 18 19 20 celsius in the south mid to high teens in the north and that sets us off for a warm start to friday still some of that low cloud and mist around the east coast but it tends to retreat during the morning to the immediate beaches and there'll be some low cloud creeping around the southwestern coast as well with the potential for some showers to turn up later here. Otherwise, for many, it's bright skies and another hot day. Mid to high 20s widely, 30 or 31 Celsius in the south and southeast. Then into Saturday, it's another warm start to the day. Plenty of sunshine from the word go, especially towards the east and the south. A change on the way, though, for the north and northwest. Northern and western Scotland see some showers and some cooler air later. That spreads across the northern half of the country on Sunday, clearing elsewhere on Monday. The temperature's rising. Boxed Solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel.
When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament, but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10 a.m. till noon on GB News. Britain's news channel. It's 10 p.m. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, Britain's open border continues to be abused and it's costing us. With over £2 million spent simply on removing empty migrant dinghies from the sea. So when will the government start saving taxpayers' money and turn the boats back? That's the big debate with my superstar panel next. And tonight, I'm joined by Alison Pearson, Lord Bailey and Amy Nicole Turner. Plus, amid reports Rishi Sunak will consent to school children changing their gender identity over fears he would end up on the wrong side of history, is the Prime Minister actually consigning himself to the scrap heap of spineless modern-day leaders? We'll debate in the media buzz. Also coming up tonight in scenes that no one saw coming, the Prince of Wales and Paul Gascoigne bumping into each other at a Pret in Bournemouth with Gaza. There you go. Even planting a kiss. But what exactly was said to prompt the most of intimate gestures? Well, in a world-exclusive interview, Paul Gascoigne joins me live to tell all about that kiss with the heir to the British throne, Gaza, live soon. Plus, one year tomorrow from the death of the late Queen Elizabeth II, we look back on what was the most extraordinary 12 days in modern British history. Later this hour, Royal Historian Advisor to the Crown, Robert Lacey, examines how the New Look monarchy has coped with the seismic constitutional shift. And the woman who saw the nation through its grief, former Prime Minister Liz Truss, shares secrets of staring a country in mourning in an exclusive sit-down with GB News. Though so she was physically quite frail, she was absolutely mentally alert and determined to do her duty. The assumption absolutely was that this would be the first of many meetings. And the latest James Bond novel comes from woke lefties with love. There was not even a pretense at diversity here. Ethelstan hadn't been the least bit concerned about ensuring that half the people he'd hired to carry out his coup should be women or non-white or disabled. This was an unapologetically old school gathering. Yeah, that's Bond in 2023. Should we just declare British culture dead and buried tonight? Maybe we'll decide on that soon. Uh, also, a new Greatest Britain and Union Jackass name, so do stay up with us. And the first of the newspaper front page is hot off the press too, right after the news with Ray Addison. Thanks, Dan. Good evening. Our top stories tonight. A manhunt involving more than 150 counter-terrorism officers is underway for escaped terror suspect Daniel Khalifa. GB News sources have confirmed that he's accused of spying for Iran. The Met Police say a lack of sightings of Khalifa is a testament to his ingenuity as a soldier. Meanwhile, the force has released an image of the bid food vehicle he used to escape and security checks have been tightened at ports. 
Despite the incident, the Prime Minister says there's been fewer prison escapes under the Tories than Labour. There are something like 4,000 more prison officers uh, than there were in 2017. And with regard to the Labour Party who posed the question, again, the facts show that during their 13 years in office, there were 10 times the number of escaped prisoners than you've seen in the 13 years of Conservative-led government. But we're doing everything we can to find this person. And as I said, if anyone has any information, please do contact the police. Well, the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, says this escape is the government's fault. I think we now know there were already some pretty damning reports into Wandsworth, um, issues about staffing, issues about buildings, and that's a pattern of behaviour now under this government, whether it's this prison um, or other prisons or other infrastructure across uh, the country. And you know, it certainly hasn't helped that in the last 10 years we've had 10 justice secretaries. And I know from my time as director of public prosecutions just how important stability is when it comes to criminal justice. A police investigation is being launched into dozens of baby deaths and injuries at Nottingham University Hospital's NHS Trust. More than 1,700 families were part of an independent review of maternity care at NUH, which was led by Donna Ockenden. The senior midwife led a similar investigation at the Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital NHS Trust. The Prime Minister is facing another by-election following the resignation of his former Deputy Chief Whip, Chris Pincher. The MP for Tamworth made the decision after losing an appeal against an eight-week suspension over groping allegations. In a statement, Mr Pincher said he didn't want uncertainty for his constituents. He sent his resignation letter to the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. This was a situation that needed to be resolved and uh, now we know the way forward and we will put forward a very strong candidate from the Conservative Party who will help attract investment, uh, jobs to Staffordshire and to the wider region and that's what we'll be campaigning on. This is GB News across the UK on TV, in your car, on digital radio and on your smart speaker by saying play GB News. Now let's get back to Dan. Tomorrow's news tonight now in our media buzz. First front pages are in. One story dominating, not surprisingly, the Metro leads on the manhunt continuing for the terrorist bus suspect Daniel Abel Khalid, who escaped from a prison in London yesterday. The paper says there were traffic queues outside Dover as vehicles were checked for the elusive jailbreaking soldier. The headline in The Independent asks, was it an inside job? with the paper saying that Khalif had helped to escape with an intelligence source calling the breakout orchestrated. My superstar panel back with me now. Top Daily Telegraph columnist Alison Pearson, Conservative peer Lord Bailey and the author and broadcaster Amy Nicole Turner. Now, more evidence of Britain signing blank cheques when it comes to the illegal invasion of our southern border. It's been revealed the government is spending a whopping £2 million of taxpayer cash on private boats to pick up the empty dinghies left abandoned by illegal migrants in the Channel. Leaked documents obtained by the Times newspaper showed the Home Office paid a Scottish maritime business £577,000 every three months for two vessels, dubbed by local fishermen a, quote, total waste of money, just to take the graphs away. Add that to the staggering £6 million a day cost of putting them up in hotels, it becomes plain why this emergency needs to be solved now. Meanwhile, mucky Macron is ignoring calls for the French to intercept boats before they reach British waters. But, Alison, I know this is a small cost in the scheme of things, right? But it does show how ludicrous this situation has become. So, what, £500 million to Macron uh, simply to allow the French to escort the boats into our waters. Mm -hmm. Another £2 million simply to remove the dinghies from our waters. This could all be stopped, Alison. This could all be stopped if we instituted a turn-back policy. And I believe you want the Navy involved. 
Well, you know me, Dan, hardcore Thatcherite. I'd have the, I'd have a naval blockade. Mm. You know, I mean, there's a reason why this country hasn't, you know, been occupied as other countries have. Is because we have the blessing of the English Channel, don't we? It's always repelled invaders. It's always been very, very easy for our island to be defended. And this is an invasion. It is an invasion, and well, Swella Braverman got told off for calling it invasion. But, but it is. Twenty-two thousand, mainly young men, have come across the Channel uh, this year alone, and yes, two million pounds adds insult to injury because they get in the boats, they get across the line, and then the RNLI and our border force go out and pick them up, and they abandon the dinghies, and then Mr McTavish from uh, <laughs> from, the, from the Shetland Islands comes down and, and puts in a bill for, for two million yeah. quid. But as you said, it's a drop in the ocean compared to the two billion a year mm. in uh, hotel and... And only going up. Cost. Just Only one, just one stat, OK? My statistic of the week, since the new rules came in in 2021, that anyone who had come in from a safe third country had to be deported. Let's guess how many people the Home Office has deported. Two. Oh, my goodness. Two. Oh, my goodness. So there's no hope, Dan. There's Amy no Carl, you say £2 million pounds is just a drop in the ocean. But it's not when you consider the costs that are stacking up. And I'm sick of it. I don't want another penny of mine going into this. I know, this is the cost of the illegal migration bill, which was immoral and impractical on every single level and is now costing billions. Because if you make a plan that purely detains people indefinitely with no hope of processing them, no hope of making any use of their potential, this is what you get. You get a very, very, very expensive detention programme. Sean Bailey? Um, there's two things. Firstly, someone in Scotland's making a killing. <laughs> um, good luck to them. I, I, Sean, I Sean and I yeah. are volunteering to start <laughs> running a dinky <laughs> rescue business. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I respect the hustle. But actually, £2 million, what it really signifies is just how big the £500 million is. Yeah. And I think it's time for the government to have a, 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 an assessment of where all this money we're spending is going. Let's be very clear, the government will have to deal with the migrants. Now, how you want to deal with them is, is another discussion, but it will have to be dealt with. But any money we put in there, let's try and get some bang for our buck. If we're paying all this money to France, for instance, and they're not providing service, let's take the money back and do the service ourselves. And just to go to Amy's point about the illegal migration bill, the, the bill in, in and of itself isn't what's what's causing this mm -hmm. to be a big cost. It's the migration itself. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. The solution to this is international. Mm -hmm. And when people keep saying, oh, we'll just have people in, that's fine if that's your policy. But remember, it has a real cost. And, the, and where the backlash will come is very little respect for the bill payer. So you could say it's only £2 million, but if you're someone who's struggling to make ends meet, you've been in an overcrowded council flat for however long, you know, you've just just lost your job, two million pounds seems like an awful lot of money to waste. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Now, at almost exactly <clears throat> this time last year, the late Queen pulled out of a meeting of the Privy Council, sparking concern across the country. What followed was the most extraordinary 12 days in British history as the whole country pulled together to mourn the passing of our greatest ever monarch. One woman at the heart of it all was our then new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, who guided the nation through our grief. Our royal correspondent, Cameron Walker, has this exclusive interview with the former PM as she lifts the lid on leading a country in unprecedented mourning. Liz Truss, welcome to GB News. How involved were you in discussions to be appointed at Balmoral Castle rather than traditionally at Buckingham Palace? Well, the discussions have been going on for several days. I'd just been uh, elected as leader of the Conservative Party and we were hearing rumours and I discussed it with the Cabinet Secretary when the decision came through to have the meeting at Balmoral and clearly it was about the Queen's health. You know, she was absolutely on top of what was happening. She was very, very keen to reassure me that we'd be meeting again soon. So, absolutely, it was very important to her. What were your first impressions when you, of Her Majesty when you walked into that drawing room? And although she was physically quite frail, she was absolutely mentally alert and determined to do her duty. The assumption absolutely was that 
this will be the first of many meetings. When you went into the Commons, you were not aware that Her Majesty was dying at that point. I knew that she was seriously ill. I think I didn't know how imminent uh, the end was. That, was. that was the situation. 25 minutes to seven, and Buckingham Palace has indeed confirmed in the last few moments that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has died. I feel very, very sad about the uh, situation, but also just, you know, knowing that <laughs> I would have to deal with it. You've seen the king, king a lot over those 10 days, and then you had, I suppose, your first weekly audience with him in, in October, where he kind of made a joke. Your Majesty, lovely to see you again. Thank you, oh, it's a great pleasure. Yeah, anyway. What do you think he meant by that? Well, I, think, uh, I think it might be my third visit to Buckingham Palace that day. Uh, because we'd had a Privy Council meeting earlier, so I think he was talking about my frequent, my frequent visits. I see, so it's a joke more than anything else. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And you can catch much more of that exclusive Liz Truss interview on GB News from breakfast tomorrow and in full on the GB News YouTube page. But coming up, Amid reports Rishi Sunak will consent to school children changing their gender identity over fears he would end up on the wrong side of history. Is the Prime Minister actually consigning himself to the scrap heap of spineless modern day leaders? My superstar panel return to debate that in the media buzz. But next, it's the moment that has stunned the country and the world today. Paul Gascoigne planting a kiss on the Prince of Wales earlier at a Pret in Bournemouth. In a major exclusive interview, Gaza himself reveals exactly what happened with Will. You don't want to miss it. Paul Gascoigne, live, straight after the break. This September, the GB News family is back together from breakfast. Right across the day, breaking the latest stories and every evening. And don't forget the weekend. We've got the whole of the UK covered. Every week, we'll be hearing your views from up and down the country with fun, lively and intelligent conversation with the biggest guests. This September, we'll meet Chris and John. Thank you for choosing GB News. We're proud to be Britain's news channel. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes & Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate, both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows... Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel like all families, we have arguments every now and then, but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is, and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. 
We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast. Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Now, throughout his career, English footballing maestro Paul Gascoigne stunned the world with his exploits both on and off the pitch. And even now, he never fails to surprise and amaze us. Earlier today, the Prince of Wales visited a Pret in Bournemouth as part of his major campaign to end homelessness. But who managed to be there at random? None other than Gaza himself. And it was the royal who ended up appearing the most starstruck. Watch. So the pair were clearly enjoying their impromptu coffee catch-up, which Gaza, to everyone's delight and astonishment, decided to seal with a kiss. And I'm delighted that in a world exclusive now, Paul Gascoigne joins me to tell us more about that incredible meeting with the heir to the British throne. Gaza, what a moment. You're dominating headlines all around the world for that little peck with Prince William. Uh, but tell me, that was a total coincidence today. It wasn't planned. Uh, you just happened to be there and heard the prince was coming. Well, I was just, I was having a coffee with a man's like Katie, and she had to change some of the Zara's. So as we're walking up, there was a lot of people, um, hundreds with cameras, and I thought, well, that's nice of them to turn up for me, but not realise that <laughs> Prince William was there. And so I said to Katie, well, I met him at a couple of England games before, and then I, I thought, oh, I'm going to say hello to him. And uh, so obviously I waited, and then um, I just started talking to him and saying, Prince, I don't know why, I just said, Prince, it's Gaza. And then he went, is that you? I went, yeah. And then he said he's been watching out for us. So, I mean, he's what a great guy. And I'll tell you what, he's good looking and all. He's good looking. But, so um, you, yeah, so are you, good. Gaza, two good looking blokes there. But what else, what else did he say to you? Because uh, he actually put his hand uh, on your shoulder. So it, it seemed like you were having quite a personal moment, even though there are a lot of people around. Yeah, he just said he'd be watching out for us and making sure I was okay. And I said, like, you know, I'm okay. And he said, like, that's when he put his arm really sort of said, are you sure not? Is everything okay and that? So it was nice to, you know, to go out his way and not just to speak to us, but to actually put his arm around us, like, you know. So in fairness, I kept it in the family. I, I, I gave him a kiss. So I mean, yeah. a kiss lady died. So I keep it in the family. I thought I'd give him a kiss. Yeah, so, um, so tell me, tell, tell me about, tell me about the kiss, Gaza, because of course, royal protocol dictates that you're not actually meant to kiss them. But he seemed to be quite enamoured. Well, that word's really not in my dictionary, so <laughs> um, I just couldn't resist it. But it, yeah, I felt like I could have taught him for ages, and was nice him, you know. He was just going on, and for, for him to like actually be in Bournemouth, there were so many people there, and I just. Uh, right, and an opportunity uh, to meet the guy, you know, and uh, he's a really nice guy, really nice guy he is, and uh, I couldn't resist that, I thought I've got to give him a kiss. Because there was the famous picture of you that you refer to with Diana in the 90s, wasn't there? Yeah, well, I kissed, obviously, I kissed her hand and all that, and then obviously, I mean, and then obviously when I was, when I was torn to him, I just felt like I could have torn him, as if I was just torn to him, he made. Yeah. Um, you know, he's in great... Hopefully he'll invite us round for tea and scone. Katie might make us a cup of tea and um, see how we get on. See, I should have left him with number 999, but, but no, he's there. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, he was thought of as, as if he was going on for ages and for him to be in Bournemouth and doing like... Because, like, sometimes I go around, if I'm, uh, you know, if I'm doing nothing, sometimes I'll go around and give the homeless cigarettes mm. or some money or, or, a, or a sandwich and that. Um, so for him to turn up... 
And there were so many people there, it was unbelievable. I thought they were for me, so I'm quite gutted, really. But Yeah, because the reason I mean? he was in Bournemouth was to raise awareness of his homelessness initiative, which is something that you believe in. Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know, because there's quite a lot. I mean, I've been in Bournemouth quite a way now, quite a, a few years, and, uh, you know, you see a lot of these homeless people. I mean, obviously, I've been in treatment myself, um, but, you know, you see some of them in the streets and that, I feel sorry for them. So for him to give up his time to come to Bournemouth, you know, and um, g- give his best and all that, and probably give everybody a lift to Bournemouth. There's so many people outside and inside the press. Press must have got some uh, good publicity anyway, but... Um, yeah. I don't yeah, guess it. Because you, you've, you've got a habit at turning up at news events, don't you? You're becoming famous for this now. Well, I sniff them out. <laughs> If I'm, if I'm bored, I thought, right, I'm going there. I'm going to work myself. <laughs> so, um, so I didn't mind a bit of, bit of yeah. trouble. But I didn't realise, because me and Katie were just sitting there, and we're both, like, a bit, bit down in that. And I says, come on, we'll just go for a walk, and I'll cheer you up. And then 100 yards down the road, there's Prince William. There you go. So, right, Katie's like, go on, go on, you've got to say hello to him. But it, what was brilliant, it was what Katie said. Oh, yeah, I says, this is my manager, Katie. He went, yeah, I met you at the Euros. As if he's going to say, yeah, OK, Katie, yeah, I've got your number, remember? <laughs> That's classic, that. I met oh, you at the Euros. I love that. Yeah, I cool. love that. Uh, of course, it's been uh, a difficult year for the royal family. It was one year ago yeah. tomorrow that the late Queen passed away. Uh, but they've done pretty well, haven't they, Gazza, given that she was such an enormous figure? Do you think Charles and, and William uh, are protecting the future of the monarchy? Well, I know, I, I know years ago, I, obviously, I put my arm around Thatcher and I kissed Lady Diana, and I was supposed to go to Buckingham Palace and the Queen banders. I was going to say, it just put me arm around her. So, but, yeah, they've done well, you know, because... The woman was unbelievable, wasn't she? I mean, what she did for our country. You know, she worked non-stop over the last nine days. Incredible woman. Um, so, you know, for Prince William, what he's doing uh, is fantastic. You know? um, and I'm sure the Queen would be uh, proud of him. You know, and he's obviously he's, he's carrying on the legacy. It's uh, fantastic. And what's good about him is, well, he loves his football. So He does, which is important. Uh, Gaz, how are you doing? Uh, you look very well. Obviously, we haven't spoken for a year or, year or so. Are you doing well? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing really well. Yeah, I'm enjoying back and doing some fishing and that. And some, um, I've got a lot of work coming up, venues around the country with uh, KDM and their management. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that, meeting the fans again. Um, because, obviously, with this COVID thing, there was a lot of venues were cancelled. So, it looks like I'm going to be busy from the end of the month till the middle of November, so I'm looking forward to being on the road again. Keep, keeps us busy. I was going to say keep you out of trouble, but by the looks of it, I think I've had a few headlines there. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are good headlines. These are good headlines, Gaza. We embrace that. It was actually just a beautiful moment. Uh, William looked genuinely delighted that you'd just turned up. He almost thought it was some sort of organised surprise, but, in fact, it was just you surprising him. And I also think, isn't it great, Gaza, that we live in a country where the future king can be around the corner and you can just turn up and meet him? Because, actually, anyone can do that, and I think that's still a pretty amazing thing. Yeah, I've had a... I mean... My mobile has been quite quiet lately, apart from about the last few hours. It's non-stop now. I mean, my sister texted me. One minute you're kissing his mother, next minute you're kissing him. And I was like, well... <laughs> yeah, kissing right, the... That's what I was thinking about. I mean, because I just do things on the spur of the moment. Yeah. And then Katie's never stopped laughing, and I'm thinking... Kissing the future just... king. No, it was a great <laughs> moment, Gaza. It was a great Maybe moment. Both. Thank you for sharing it with us uh, and really great to see you doing so well. Paul Gascoigne, thank you so much. But coming up, as the nation marks the first anniversary of the Queen's passing, as we just discussed, how has the monarchy changed in the past 12 months and does it remain on a strong path with Charles as King? Uh, Robert Lacey, the esteemed royal historian for The Crown, will offer his expert analysis shortly. But next in the media buzz, has Rishi Sunak made a shocking betrayal of young people in mid 
reports he will allow school children to change their gender identity. Plus, I reveal a new and uber woke James Bond novel where the Lothario spy is offended by a lack of diversity from his adversary. So can we just declare British culture to be officially dead? We're back very soon. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello, it's Aidan McGibbon here from the Met Office with the GB News forecast. Another warm night to come overnight with elevated temperatures for the time of year. More hot sunshine to come then into Friday. Not for everyone, there is a fair amount of medium and high level cloud around and there are some showers drifting north across Scotland and Northern Ireland overnight. Most of the rain not reaching the ground. These are relatively high base showers, but you could see some flashes of lightning as that clears away. Then for most places it's dry with clear spells some low cloud creeping into the east coast but wherever you are it's a warm night a muggy feel 18 19 20 celsius in the south mid to high teens in the north and that sets us off for a warm start to friday still some of that low cloud and mist around the east coast but it tends to retreat during the morning to the immediate beaches and there'll be some low cloud creeping around the southwestern coast as well with the potential for some showers to turn up later here. Otherwise, for many, it's bright skies and another hot day. Mid to high 20s widely, 30 or 31 Celsius in the south and southeast. Then into Saturday, it's another warm start to the day. Plenty of sunshine from the word go, especially towards the east and the south. A change on the way, though, for the north and northwest. Northern and western Scotland see some showers and some cooler air later. That spreads across the northern half of the country on Sunday, clearing elsewhere on Monday. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. mental? Delicious. your mouth. OK. Here comes, a, <laughs> here comes a train. Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Oh, oh. Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomney, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. 
We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Let's return to tomorrow's news site now in our media and more front pages have just been delivered. The Guardian leads with the ongoing search for an escaped terror suspect. The paper says the incident has provoked a furious row after ministers were blamed by Labour for staff shortages in jail. And more on the media buzz now with tonight's superstar panel, top Daily Telegraph columnist Alison Pearson, the Conservative peer Lord Sean Bailey and author and broadcaster Amy Nicole Turner. Now, the war over children transitioning in schools is heating up, infuriating many of his own MPs. Rishi Sunak is reportedly going to allow school children to change their gender identity, meaning they will be free to choose their pronouns and even wear a different uniform so long as they have parental permission. The government had been weighing up legal plans to introduce an outright ban on transitioning in schools, but backtracked amid warnings that it could leave the Tories on the wrong side of history. Downing Street insists that no decisions have been taken yet, but Alison Pearson, you're just as angry as many of uh, Rishi's right-wing MPs about this, aren't you? What are they for, Dan? What are the Conservatives for? This is a hugely important issue, a historic issue, I would argue, and they were going to do something about it. It's not just let's be nice to a kid in the class who wants to say they're a girl or a boy. We've got thousands of teenage girls who I think are trapped in a cult. They are claiming they want to be boys. This should be allowed to happen in a school, OK? It's not factual, it's not science, it's not biology. If they want to do it at home, that's fine. Some schools, as we know, uh, parents don't even know that Chloe is now called mm. Carl. And this was a brilliant opportunity for the Prime Minister to set some standards and to say, we can't allow this. It's absolutely dangerous to children. It really is dangerous. And I am absolutely confident, he says, the Conservatives say they don't want to be on the wrong side of history. Be on the right side of decency and common sense. And if they don't do it, they're... Look, they're bad on many, many things, this government. They've disappointed their supporters. But not on this. Mm. Don't let us down on this. It's too important. Amy, you completely disagree. I completely disagree. And I think this is one of the things Rishi Sunak has got completely right. Just to say, no one changes their identity. No one changes their gender. You are your gender. And gender-affirming care has been confirmed to be the correct way Sean's to move shaking forward. his head well, then he's, well, then Sean's shaking his head. He's shaking, he's shaking his head at the BMJ, the British Psychological Society. Yeah. He's shaking his head at science, established science, look, look. and all the medical recommendations that came out of, for example, the committee hearings for the gender recognition um, updates in Here Scotland. Here science, Sean. Um, but, 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 but that so is, same... And can we just say, this is about social transitioning. It's not about surgery. Listen, listen. It's not about medical Amy, intervention. Amy, it's but, about this, this, social... This, this, this was all these, these this was all of the, 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 the recommendations that led to the Tavistock Clinic. OK? Yeah. And this, the Prime Minister's job is not to be on the right side of history. The Prime Minister's job is to protect our children. Now, if you get older and want to transition, absolutely fine, but this burden shouldn't be put on schools. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be put on children. Yes, a number of children are vulnerable, but instead of us responding to their vulnerability, we've decided to make every other child around them vulnerable as well. Quite it's right. the wrong thing to do. And the moment a left winger gives you any kind of slogan, what that's designed to do is stifle kill the debate. So the wrong side of history means nothing other than All this don't is, have the this debate. Is the modern this is an equivalent. opportunity. This is an opportunity for the Prime Minister to give children who are confused a break. This is an opportunity for the Prime Minister is, for the Prime Minister to protect all of our children. The modern equivalent this of is the modern I mean. equivalent of Section 28. Completely. No, it's not. No, How is it not? By denying, not. by denying no, trans, children. trans, no, trans children, children their identity. Children, children by their very nature are easy to confuse. Yeah, yeah. Well, and have, teenagers, yeah, and, and, have anyway. and have and have and have no 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 purchase. Remember, some of these learning. people, Alison, though, are actually younger than teenagers. Yes, much and, younger. And uh, 
often these diagnoses lead to puberty blockers, and actually it's the they puberty never do. blockers that Amy, then Amy, stop the, the waiting puberty list. developing. Amy, and it's the, puberty they can't, you'd be lucky to even get an appointment got, Amy, with a gender clinic. There's a lot of young gay boys being told that they must be a woman, and a lot of young lesbian girls well, being told that they must be a man. It's, that's and that is dangerous. Untrue. Nobody Look, can get access fans to medical. were sent into meltdown early this year as Anne Fleming's iconic James Bond novels were cleansed of apparently offensive language by their virtue signaling publisher. But now, in a further affront to Fleming's original works, Charlie Higson's latest official young Bond book, I've got it here, on His Majesty's Secret Service, has been exposed for filling impressionable young readers' heads with this sort of guff. Burkitt was an ex-Tory MP, famous for promoting COVID, vaccines, mask wearing and 5G conspiracy theories, which had spilled over into the usual anti-immigrant, anti-BBC, anti-MSN, anti-cultural Marxist, climate change denying pronouncements. It was an anti-trans diatribe that had eventually got him kicked out of the party, and he'd soon after set up the New Freedom Party. Bond was struck by something. It was a long while since he'd been at any kind of function that was almost exclusively full of men. It felt strange. There was not even a pretense at diversity here. Ethelstan hadn't been the least bit concerned about ensuring that half the people he'd hired to carry out his coup should be women or non-white or disabled. This was an unapologetically old school gathering. Oh, Alison, what's happened to James Bond? This is not a spoof. This is not a spoof, Alison, I promise you. This is real. This is the well, official we did, book. Well, we didn't know, Dan, that James Bond had a secret career as an Islington social worker, did we? <laughs> I mean, it is so bad. It is absolutely atrocious. James Bond was uh, a sadist, a sexist, a chauvinist, uh, one of the most dazzling, iconic characters in English fiction. Absolutely brilliant. And this is... Th th there is no overlap between Ian Fleming's James Bond and a woke person. And this is what Charlie Higgs and trying to do in this book, and it is do you excruciating. Like it, sure? I think what will happen is people will vote with their feet. You saw it with all the Disney films. People, the last set of Disney yeah. films, the last five have been absolute flops. People don't like to be dictated absolute to. Absolute flops? Yes, absolute Little Mermaid, flops. wasn't it the biggest? Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. It only, made, it was only made 500 million when it really should have been a two billion pound film. This it read like flop. an Amy Nicole book. <laughs> 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 I thought it read like a Dan Wharton monologue, actually. <laughs> and I felt like it was a bit of a oh, biopic of harsh. Andrew Bridgen, oh, and maybe James Bond has been to a reform party. No, and it's, so, it's so politically biased. It, it's yeah. so, so lame. Biased. So it's lame. lame. Alison Lewis and Sean <laughs> Bailey, Amy Nicole Turner, do stand by because coming up as hundreds of woke academics campaign for only 100% plant-based meals to be dished out at universities and gain the support of BBC presenter Chris Packham. Should Britain's next generation really be forced to give up meat? I'll serve that up to my superstar panel during the nominations for tonight's Greatest Britain and Union Jackass. But next in Uncancelled, it's one year without the late great Queen Elizabeth II. King Charles was a long waiting here and now he's drawing up his blueprint for a modern day monarchy. But can he consolidate the future of the royal family? Esteemed royal biographer, advisor to the Netflix hit series The Crown, Robert Lacey will be back with his expert analysis in just two minutes time. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on...
On GB News, the People's Channel. Britain is watching. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament, but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon on GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. This time a year ago, we were all preparing for the worst after the increasingly unwell late Queen pulled out of a Privy Council session via video link at the last minute. In an exclusive interview with GB News Royal Correspondent Cameron Walker, the then Prime Minister Liz Truss has tonight remembered that dawning realisation of what was to come. Originally it was going to be a video call, then that turned into a phone call, and then it was postponed. Were you given any special indication that Her Majesty's health had taken a turn for the worse on that day? Well, so I arrived quite um, just before 6 p.m. for the meeting, and everybody was there sort of waiting around. And we waited for a few minutes, and then the news arrived that the Queen would no longer be able to do the meeting. And that was the first I heard of it, but clearly it was a very ominous sign. And when the worst happened, the UK would pull together in grief as the greatest country on earth. Personally, I'll never forget broadcasting throughout that momentous week, starting outside Buckingham Palace as the announcement of the death was made. There is an airy silence here at Buckingham Palace tonight. Just moments ago, the flag lowered to half-mast, confirming the news that the Queen is dead. The Queen is like no other historical figure. Her impact will not be repeated in our lifetimes, perhaps never again. But she was just always there, and therefore she was always going to be there. And now suddenly, you know, the nation's mother, grandmother, great-grandmother has suddenly, what seems sudden, suddenly gone. She embraced her destiny and she embraced duty. You know, she happily did her duty. I, I saw it and I thought, I can't believe this. But on the other hand, I'm very pleased she's come home. And she had this innate glamour about her. Mm. And there was a fison in the air. You knew that she was in the building, do you know what I mean? And I think what's been really remarkable is that people of such diverse backgrounds are all pledging their loyalty to Britain. We are proud of her and proud of our great country and more united than we have been in many years. Well, I'm delighted to welcome to the studio now Robert Lacey, biographer of Her Late Majesty and historian on the award-winning Netflix series, The Crown. So, Robert, look, it is hard to believe, isn't it, uh, that that all took place a year ago. The news we knew was coming, uh, given the late Queen's health, but we were dreading. One year on, do you think we know the impact of that event and how do you think the King has done to steady the ship? I think we do know. Um, you know, the monarchy is one of the most polled institutions in Britain. I've got the figures here, there's no need to hold them up. What's interesting about those moments that you've just shown, they represented, in polling terms, an enormous surge in support for the monarchy. All those questions about, you know, what do you think of it? Is it value for money? Everybody um, said, yes, this matters. Because clearly, the emotion that people were feeling mm -hmm. couldn't be interpreted in any other way. Now, your second question, what's happened over the last year? Again, looking at the polls, the figures have gone down slightly, mm -hmm. but not much. 65% of people in a poll, I think, coming out tonight or tomorrow, say, this is an average of Britain, say that they, uh, they favour the monarchy. Now, politicians would bite your hand off for 65% approval. Of course, young people, and I think rather healthily, young people have a question mark. Mm. They're not sure if this is the best system, mm. thousand-year-old institution that's essentially a matter of inheritance. And some people, Robert, 
say that that is in part because they're watching your show. You know, they're watching the crowd and they're thinking and learning for the first time, oh, maybe that Charles bloke wasn't very nice to that Diana lady. However, for me, it actually changed on the night that the King gave his televised address to the nation. I'd been critical of Charles. You know, he was being wading into politics. Even a few weeks before the, the Queen's death, he was commenting on the Rwanda plan, for example. That mm. felt highly inappropriate to me. Mm. But something changed that night with that address to the country. Do you agree? I agree. Firstly, The Crown is not my show. I am just the historical oh, advisor. And many people Take argue with... Take some credit for it. Take many some people credit argue for with it. the history, but the... It's the, a great the, show, by the way. Thank you. Um, but the point you're making, we saw that difference that night. We saw feeling in what mm. Prince Charles, the new king, said. Mm. Now, um, that feeling was something the Queen drained from her public appearances. It was her nature. She was a shy person, and her interpretation of a neutral monarchy was to step back. What's been very interesting about King Charles is the way in which he has, within the moderate limits of the Constitution, injected feeling. Mm. We'd never seen that for 70 years in a royal broadcast. Um, but, but there he was. And then a more modern man. A more modern man, and also a man who showed, who has showed, how a king can get involved in things that matter. He's just endorsed, for example, the campaign against food wastage. He has to be careful. Well, he, he has, has to, to be, be careful. Deaf. But the, the one event I would pick out from his year was when President Biden came to this country. Oh, yes. Like all American presidents do, he wanted his photo opportunity with the king. But he was going on to COP. And it's very interesting, he spent more time with Charles than he did with Rishi Sunak. Now, I, I don't know if that's more of an indictment on soon, well, no, but there you the, go. The point I'm simply yeah. making is that he wanted more than the photo opportunity. Well, he wanted substance from yeah. the king, and he got it. Indeed, as you know, Robert, the main goal for the first year was to avoid a major scandal. There's been lots of landmines, right? Because you've got the Prince Andrew landmine. That story is not going away because Prince Andrew is determined to clear his name. Then you have the Harry and Meghan landmine. They're not going anywhere. But somehow Charles has navigated through the first year. He hasn't inflamed his younger son too much more. He's tried to keep his brother on side. And I actually think he's done a fairly good job at bringing a family together that, let's be honest, were very divided over the past few years of the late Queen's reign. I agree. When it comes to Harry, he was absolutely firm. The morning after Spare came out, he stopped his royal privileges on the royal housing estate. He said, right, that's it. And interestingly, Harry and Meghan accepted it. No more Frogmore Cottage. Boosted him out. When it comes to Andrew, I thought it was very interesting the other day, the way we saw Andrew in a car with William. Very. That wasn't just coincidence. That was flying a... F what's, what, what's the expression? Not flying a flag. Yeah, Trying yeah. it out. He couldn't possibly go in a car with, with, with Charles. Um, but this was to see how the public would react. They did not react well. It's quite clear that Prince Andrew has not made the effort to redeem himself. I'm of an age where I remember a man called John Profumo, mm. who spent 15 years in obscurity in the East End of London, working to redeem what he'd done. And only then did he come back in public. Prince Andrew has made not the slightest attempt mm. to, to, well, to apologise. He's paid off his accuser. Mm. I think... He is finished, and I think Prince Charles is... Sorry, there you are, you see. Yeah, even a year on. Even a year years, on. I 70 know. years. Um, I know. We, we've seen a king who is much more decisive than we feel, and I would agree with you. I prefer King Charles III to Prince Charles. Oh, big time. <laughs> big time. Absolutely. Uh, Robert Lacey, biographer of the late Queen, historical advisor to the Crown. Thank you so much. But it's time now to reveal tonight's greatest Britain in union, jackass. And my superstar panel return, Alison Pearson, who's your nominee for tonight's Greatest Britain? Well, having seen your package, Dan, I'm going to have a little shimmy and I'm going to say the Greatest Britain ever, of course, the late Queen Elizabeth II, but also this week, fantastic. Have a go, heroes in Sloane Street, sitting on a watch thief um, because the cops just aren't around. Oh, yes, and I think we have a look at this. <laughs> Good on.
on then, because shoplifting should not be decriminalised in the UK, and maybe it's going to be the public that has to show that that's the case. Sean Bailey, your Greatest Britain nominee. My Greatest Britain nominee is the late, great Queen Elizabeth oh, II. It is a year since her passing tomorrow. She served the Commonwealth and Britain for 70 years with honour, dignity and grace, and the country salutes you. Indeed. Amy Nicole, right. your nominee. Um, do you reckon the Have A Go Heroes could go seize Michelle Moan's yacht? Just a thought. Um, my nominee is, in the spirit of King Charles, um, is an open letter sent to universities, the plant-based university campaign. Oh. So, 700 academics have got together. It's backed hey. by the likes of Chris Packham, Caroline university Lucas... students are growing. And it's a very straightforward way Oh, yeah, and then, and then their backs will all break in a few a years' time. No, I'm not going for this. I hate this campaign. No, 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 I hate this production. campaign. I'm sorry, I can't go for it. I'm going for the late Queen. What? I mean... She was like our greatest we never ever knew greatest like person. She won all the time, <laughs> and it's brilliant to allow that to happen. Uh, Union Jackass time. Alison Pearson, your nominee, quickly. Um, my un Union Jackass is uh, Charlie Higson, who has um, desecrated our great James Bond with his. Oh yes, uh, the author. His woke the author. The author of the woke. The bond. author of the woke. Bond. Sean Bailey, your nominee. <laughs> Mine is the household appliances that spy on us: television, smart speakers, even washing oh, yeah. machines and thermostats. They gather much more information. Information than, they, than you think for for people like TikTok and Google. It's time it stopped, yeah. and it was great research done by Witch terrifying. magazine. Yeah, it's terrifying, actually. Amy Nicole Turner, your nominee. So um, I know I'm lucky to have a local swimming pool, as so many have closed down. But I found out this morning that my local leisure centre are offering doggy swimming classes, <laughs> where you can literally take your dog for a swim in the pool that is then frequented by children, you know, pensioners, okay. everyone. They're going to love you. They're going to love you for slagging them off on national television. I know they've, I know they've oh, want, I, they want to be I'm innovative. Gonna go, I'm going to go for Charlie Higson, though. <laughs> I mean, uh, and Alison swimming. Pearson, because woke Bond woke is Bond. utterly rubbish. Rubbish. Alison Pearson, Sean Bailey, Amy Nicole Turner, my superstar panel, thank you all so much. Thank you for your company all week. I'm back on Monday night at 9pm. Mark Dolan here for the next three nights. So when Headliners is up next, good night. The temperature's rising. Boxed Solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello, it's Aidan McGiven here from the Met Office with the GB News forecast. Another warm night to come overnight with elevated temperatures for the time of year. More hot sunshine to come then into Friday. Not for everyone, there is a fair amount of medium and high level cloud around and there are some showers drifting north across Scotland and Northern Ireland overnight. Most of the rain not reaching the ground. These are relatively high base showers, but you could see some flashes of lightning as that clears away. Then for most places it's dry with clear spells some low cloud creeping into the east coast but wherever you are it's a warm night a muggy feel 18 19 20 celsius in the south mid to high teens in the north and that sets us off for a warm start to friday still some of that low cloud and mist around the east coast but it tends to retreat in the morning to the immediate beaches and there'll be some low cloud creeping around the southwestern coast as well with the potential for some showers to turn up later here. Otherwise, for many, it's bright skies and another hot day. Mid to high 20s widely, 30 or 31 Celsius in the south and southeast. Then into Saturday, it's another warm start to the day. Plenty of sunshine from the word go, especially towards the east and the south. A change on the way, though, for the north and northwest. Northern and western Scotland see some showers and some cooler air later. That spreads across the northern half of the country on Sunday, clearing elsewhere on Monday. The temperature's rising. Boxed Solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. This September, the GB News family is back together from breakfast right across the day, breaking the latest stories and every evening. And don't forget the weekend. We've got the whole of the UK covered. Every week, we'll be hearing your views from up and down the country.
with fun, lively and intelligent conversation with the biggest guests. This September, we'll meet Chris and John. Thank you for choosing GB News. We're proud to be Britain's news channel. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate. Both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11 a.m. on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. The show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan Tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan Tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel. Like all families, we have arguments every now and then. But actually, we agree on what the mission of GB News is, and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often, they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast. Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the people's channel. Britain's news channel. Good evening. Headliners is on the way, but first, our news headlines. A manhunt involving more than 150 counter-terrorism officers is underway for escaped terror suspect Daniel Khalife. GB News sources have confirmed that he's accused of spying for Iran. Met police say a lack of sightings of Khalife is testament to his ingenuity as a soldier. Meanwhile, the force has released an image of the bid food vehicle he used to escape, and security checks have been tightened at ports. Despite the incident, the PM says there's been fewer prison escapes under the Tory government. There are something like 4,000 more prison officers uh, than there were in 2017. And with regard to the Labour Party who posed the question, again, the facts show that during their 13 years in office, there were 10 times the number of escaped prisoners than you've seen in the 13 years of Conservative-led government. But we're doing everything we can to find this person. And as I said, if anyone has any information, please do contact the police. Well, the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, says the government is totally at fault. I think we now know there were already some pretty damning reports into Wandsworth, um, issues about staffing, issues about buildings, and that's a pattern of behaviour now under this government, whether it's this prison um, or other prisons or other infrastructure across uh, the country. And you know, it certainly hasn't helped that in the last 10 years we've had 10 justice secretaries. And I know from my time as director of public prosecutions just how important stability is when it comes to criminal justice. The Prime Minister is facing another by-election following the resignation of his former Deputy Chief Whip, Chris Pincher. The MP for Tamworth made the decision after losing an appeal against an eight-week suspension over groping allegations. 
In a statement, Mr Pincher said he didn't want uncertainty for his constituents. He sent his resignation letter to the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. This was a situation that needed to be resolved and uh, now we know the way forward and we will put forward a very strong candidate from the Conservative Party.